Hey guys, welcome to lesson two of limits. Today we're gonna to be talking about properties of limits. In other words, what can we do or what do we know about limits that can help us make these problems a little bit easier to solve? Properties of limits, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And there's seven properties that we're gonna go over in this video. Let's get started with rule number one. Rule number one is the law of constants. Law of constants. The law of constants states that if your limit let's just say, you know, as x approaches some constant of a constant, in this case k, so something like 7, 3.5, 69, 1 billion, whatever that constant is, if your function is also a constant, the limit, no matter what, is just the constant. This is a little bit easier to see visually. Let me pull out my red pen. If we have, if we have a graph such as this, a constant function looks like this. Let's just say this is y equals 3. The constant function y equals 3 from negative infinity to infinity. It looks like that. So no matter where you approach along this line, you're just going to get 3. So let's say we had the limit as x approaches 1. No matter where you're approaching along this line, you're just going to approach y equals 3 because, well, it's the same. It's a constant. Nothing changes. If I say we approach, you know, x equals negative 2. Let's say that's x equals negative 2. Turns out that this line is still y equals 3, so even though we're approaching a completely different number in a completely different spot in the graph, our limit is the exact same because, well, the function is constant. This is a pretty easy one to understand visually. I'm going to do a written example just to make the point even more clear. Let's say we had the limit as x approaches 7 of 10. What is that limit equal to? Well, we know based on our rule that the limit of x approaching anything of k and k being our constant is just equal to the constant. So this limit is just 10. Our second property of limits, law number two, is the law, law, sorry, of the x function. This law states that the limit as x approaches some constant c of the function x, this will always equal whatever x is approaching. This is another law that's easy to understand visually. Using the graph of the xy plane, we know that our function x is the same thing as just y equals x. That's what this means. y and x are just the same, which means our graph looks like this. Just from negative infinity to infinity going along this diagonal line where y is equal to x. If x is approaching some value, I don't know, let's just say this is 2, well, since we know that y and x are equal to each other, y will equal 2, and our limit will equal 2. That's what this law states. Let's do one mathematical example. If we have the limit as x approaches, I don't know, 7 of x, what does this limit equal? Well, by our law, we know that whatever x is approaching is the limit of the x function. So this limit is just equal to 7. Those first two are fairly easy to understand. The next few will be a bit more complicated, but trust me, they're not too bad either. Our third law is the law of scalars. And this law states that the limit as x approaches c of k, which is some constant, times f of x, which is our function, is equal to the limit as x approaches c of f of x, all multiplied by k. In other words, we can pull a constant or a scalar out of the function and bring it to the front. What this allows us to do is find out what the limit is first and then simply multiply it by whatever we pulled out to the front. Let's use an example. Let's say we have the problem, the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x. What is this limit equal to? Let's use our law of scalars. As you can see, this is being multiplied by our entire function, which is just x, which means we can pull it to the front as such. So this turns into 3 times the limit as x approaches 2 of x. Remember, our second limit law states that if our function is just x, whatever x is approaching is just the limit. So this limit is just equal to whatever x is approaching, which is 2 which means that this is just equal to 3 times 2, which is equal to 6. Let's do one more example just to really hammer the point home. Let's do the limit as x approaches 7 to x squared. Let's try something a little different. What is the limit of this problem? Well, once again, you may notice that we have a number that's being multiplied by the entire function, which means, once again, 
we can pull it out of the limit or to the front of the limit, whichever terminology you would like to use. So then this turns into two times the limit as x approaches seven of x squared. Now, what is the limit as x approaches seven of x squared? That's a good question. For this problem, what we can do is plug in seven for x. That's how we can solve most limit problems. So what we're gonna do is multiply two by seven squared. Seven squared is seven times seven, which is equal to 49. So this is equal to two times 49, and two times 49 is simply equal to 98. So that is the limit as x approaches seven of 2x squared. This is another concept that's pretty simple and trust me will save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches with bigger numbers. Now we're going to move on to laws that are almost the exact same with one minor difference. So limit law number four is the law of addition. Law of addition. And limit law number five is the law of subtraction. Now the law of addition states that the limit as x approaches some constant c of f of x plus g of x is the same thing as the limit as x approaches c of f of x plus the limit as x approaches c of g of x. And similarly, the law of subtraction is the same thing but with subtraction. So the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus g of x is the same thing as the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus the limit as x approaches c of g of x. Oh, sorry about that, of g of x. In other words, this is stating that we can split limit problems by addition and subtraction. And sometimes this makes it a little bit easier to solve. Let's do one simple example for both of these. And you know what? Let's spice it up. Instead of using the black pen, we'll use the green one for a little bit. For the law of addition, we have the limit as x approaches 3 of 3x plus x squared. What is the limit of this function? Well, as we just discussed, we can split this up by addition, and we have an addition sign right there. So let's split it up. The limit as x approaches three of three x plus the limit as x approaches three of x squared. These are equivalent. So now, like I mentioned earlier, we can just plug in whatever x is approaching to whatever x is within our limit. Let's do that here. We can plug in 3 times 3x, so this will be 3 times 3. Wow, that's really thick. And then we can add 3 squared, so 3 squared. 3 times 3 is equal to 9, and 3 squared is the same thing as 3 times 3, and so that's also equal to 9. So 9 plus 9 is equal to 18, and that is the limit of our function. Let's do a slightly different example for subtraction, and I'll even use the red pen for funsies. Let's find the limit as x approaches one of x squared minus seven. What is the limit of this function? Well, based on our law of subtraction, we can split this up by subtraction. And as you can see, we have a minus symbol right there. So let's split it up at that point. So the limit as x approaches one of x squared minus the limit as x approaches one of seven. This is equivalent to that based on our law of subtraction. Let's find both these limits. Here we can just plug in one to x squared because x is approaching one. So let's plug it in there. And remember, we just learned about the law of constants. No matter what x is approaching, if our function is a constant, the limit of that function is the constant. So here we have one squared and the limit as x approaches one of a constant is just the constant, and our constant here is seven. So one squared minus seven. One squared is the same thing as one times one, which is just one, and seven is just seven, so one minus seven equals negative six. And that is the limit of the function. Like I said, these are extremely similar, but the upside to that is that they're very easy to remember. Our sixth law, law number six, is the law, law of multiplication. And this is a long word, so give me a second. Multiplication. Law number six, law of multiplication. 
You may be able to guess what this law looks like. If we have the limit as x approaches c of f of x, which is function number 1, times g of x, function number 2, we can split it up by multiplication just like we did for addition and subtraction. So this is the same as the limit as x approaches c of f of x times the limit as x approaches c of g of x. Like I said, very easy to remember since it's the same as addition and subtraction. Let's do an example of this, and to spice it up even more, we're going to use the blue pen. That's new. Blue pen, blue pen, blue pen. Let's write our example. Let's find the limit as x approaches 2 of hmm, 3x times x plus 7. So let's split these two up by multiplication, since, well, we can. Let's find the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x, and then multiply that by the limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 7. Once again, we can just plug in whatever x is approaching to our limit function, and that will give us the limit of that function. So let's do that for both of these. The limit as x approaches 2 of 3x is equal to 3 times 2, when we plug in 2 for x, and the limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 7 is just, well, 2 plus 7. Let's simplify these down a little bit. 3 times 2 is equal to 6. 2 plus 7 is equal to 9. Now that we've simplified it down, 6 times 9 is just equal to 54. 54. And that is the limit of this problem. Not so bad, right? Now, at this point in the video, it may seem a little bit like these properties are just kind of useless knowledge that you need to know. Now, I counter that by saying that knowing these properties of limits will let you know what you can do to make a limit problem easier. And that's where I find the most use out of these. Knowing what we can actually do with a limit gives us new strategies to solve limits more easily, even if they're very complex. And I'll go over that in the next limit lesson, but let's finish this one first. I'll link it in the top right corner in case you want to skip ahead to that lesson, but you should stick around. There's just a little bit more to learn. You're almost done. Property number seven is the law of division. And shocker, it's very similar to the other three we just did. The law of division states that the limit as x approaches some constant of f of x, function number 1, divided by g of x, function number 2, can be split up and is equal to the limit as x approaches c of f of x divided by the limit as x approaches c of g of x. But there is one more rule tacked onto this. In math, we can't divide by 0. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't work. So your limit as x approaches c of g of x cannot equal zero. So I just want to make a note here that the limit as x approaches c of g of x cannot equal zero, or else this will not work. Let's do an example. May as well use the blue pen again. It worked so well last time. Let's find the limit as x approaches one of four x divided by seven x squared. At first glance, this may look a little intimidating, but because of our rule, we can make it a lot less intimidating and just a little easier to solve. So let's do that. Let's split up our two functions by their limits. So this is the same thing as the limit as x approaches 1 of 4x divided by the limit as x approaches 1 of 7x squared. And just like we've done in our past examples, in order to fully solve these limit problems, we can just plug in whatever x is approaching 4x to get our limit. So this is equal to 4 times 1 divided by 7 times 1 squared. Now this is much easier to solve and just looks a little nicer. So now all we have to do is simplify our question down. 4 times 1 is just equal to 4. 1 squared is just equal to 1. And 1 times 7 is just 7. So the limit of this problem is 4 sevenths. All right, you stuck around this far. We only got one more limit law to go. May as well get it out of the way. Our last limit law, limit law number eight. I think I said seven in the beginning. I was kidding. In my notes, I combined addition and subtraction, but I made them separate here. Limit law number eight is the law of exponents. The law of exponents. What does the law of exponents state? That's a great question. Let's write it down here. The limit as x approaches c of f of x squared, whatever our function is squared, can be, can be changed into the limit as x approaches c of f of x squared 
but you may notice one crucial difference. If our exponent is applied to the entire f of x function, we can apply it to just the limit as a whole. In other words, we can pull it out of the limit just like we did with constants earlier. And I wanna make that very apparent. Your exponent has to apply to your entire function within the limit and not just part of it. So as a little example to get my point across, the limit as x approaches one of x squared plus three x cubed, we would not be able to apply the law of exponents in this form because we have two exponents that are both not being applied to the whole function. We could solve this using the law of addition and then using the law of exponents, but we're not gonna do that right now. We're gonna do a different example that I think will help you out more in the rest of calculus. So I'm gonna erase this here to give myself a little extra room. Let's solve the limit as x approaches one of the square root, actually, the square root of x plus three. Now, why did I choose the square root? Well, if you don't know, a square root can be rewritten. So let's say we have the square root of x. This can be rewritten as x to the one half power. This is a trick that will come in handy many times in calculus. So be sure to remember it because I will probably also use it in further examples in this video series. But for now, let's solve this problem. Since we just learned about this law, let's convert this square root into the one half power. So this is the same thing as the limit as x approaches one of x plus three to the one half power. Now that we have an exponent that applies to our entire function, we can pull it out of the limit. So this is now equal to the limit as x approaches one of x plus three all to the one half power. Now we can more easily visualize this limit problem. Once again, like we've been doing throughout the rest of this video, we can plug in whatever x is approaching to x to solve for our limit. This is equal to one plus three to the one half power. One plus three is just equal to four to the one half power, which remember the one half power is the same as the square root. So we get the square root of four, which is just equal to two. And that is the limit of our problem. And that's where I'm gonna end the lesson today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're ready to move on to the next lesson, you can click here for more ways to solve limits and more complicated ways to solve limits that can help us solve, well, more complex limits. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson and I will see you guys in the next video.